Meet Lonk. Lonk is here to save the day. If I make a goof, Lonk is here to uh, point it all out. What could I have possibly goofed up in that very straightforward first episode, you ask? Come along. I'll show you. Whoa, the legend. Yay, money. Take that, nature. Yay, Hyrule Town. I forgot to talk to this guy. His name is Percy. Percy says, I've been on the road for a while. I came back in time for the festival. It feels wonderful to be back in Hyrule again in this joyous time. I, I must put these feelings into verse. Well, thanks for covering our butts, Log. Let's get back to Link's adventure now. Hello and welcome to more! The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap! In the last episode, we went to a festival hoping nothing would go wrong, and then everything went wrong. Hooray! So let's talk to the king, let's talk to Minister Paho, get a little bit of a recap of what we have to do next in our adventure. So deep within the Minish Woods, you will find a place called Deepwood Shrine. Once humans in Pakori shared that shrine as a meeting place, I think it would be best if you started your search there. And if we talk to Minister Paho, Minish Woods lies southeast of the town of Hyrule. In fact, it's due east of your house, Link. So, we're trying to go to the Minish Woods to go to Deepwood Shrine so that we can get the, uh, well, the Picori Sword reforged. That's our goal, so we can get that crowd fixed and save Princess Zelda. But I can't do that yet. I have to go over here and talk to her again. She has slightly different dialogue now. Please find a way to break the curse on Princess Zelda. At least I think that's different than last time. Well, Princess Zelda, if you be the rock, I'll be the roll. Let's roll out, guys, and let's go start our adventure. Hey, buddy. Press R while walking to roll. This is useful when you want to move fast. Yeah, I, I kind of already know that. Also, don't forget to save. Yeah, we could do that crud too, but don't worry about that. So let's keep on going down. Most of Hyrule Castle, the doors and stuff are all closed off. We can't really explore. There are monsters outside the castle. If you see one, use your shield to defend yourself. Move in close enough to use your sword if you need to fight. Right, we got a sword last time. And we got a shield last time too. So we are all set to deal with these monsters. So let's go on out. This guy says, please be careful. The other guy says exactly the same thing. So we're just not gonna talk to him. Sorry, guy. Keep on rolling. And out we go. Hyrule Castle Garden. All of these guys in the garden will just say, we can't let you pass. We've sealed the area off because of Vadi, that evil crud head. Yeah, we can't go to any of the side areas. So it's got to keep going all the way south. It's kind of weird. We go south to get to North Hyrule Field. But now we're going to have our first enemies. Unless you count, I guess, the business scrub that we fought last time. But here's our first real enemy, a red Octorok. These things are pitiful. If they actually do hit you, they do one quarter of one heart of damage. And, uh, well... They're just so lazy that you kind of have to go out of your way to actually get hit by these guys. They go down in one swing. They are a joke. Now, a little bit more dangerous are these right here. These are called crows. They actually will attack at you, or they'll fly at you. So you have to be a little bit careful with those guys, but they're also not too big of a deal. So the starting enemies, as you might expect, are pretty easy. Oop, sounds like a rupee just dropped back there. Yes, it did. So let's go ahead and grab that. And, uh, well, he said, uh, Minister Paho said that the woods are going to be east of our house. So I guess we'll go down to our house here. Gosh dang it, I keep hearing rupee sounds. Uh -huh. I got it. Okay, so let's go south, destroy this sign. And, uh, unfortunately we can't go back to our house because construction. Hooray, plot wall. So that Picori Blade was just a lock keeping those monsters in that chest. The rumor is that Vadi was looking for something inside the chest. I mean, something other than monsters, but nobody knows for sure what it is. I tell ya, he sure has been nothing but a big headache to the rest of us. That crutter. Ah! No time to talk, kid. The boss has us working our fingers to the bone. No time for a break, even. Maybe a broken finger. I'm so busy, so busy. Gotta finish here so I can go repair the steps next. You're just standing there. How are you busy? The name's Muto. I'm head carpenter around these parts. The King of Hyrule himself has entrusted me with this project. See, that sorcerer's attack tore things up pretty bad around here. You know, kid, you shouldn't be playing anywhere near the construction zone. I'm not playing. I'm trying to save Princess Zelda. This is way more important than sawing a log or whatever that guy's doing. Creepy. It's like all these monsters just appeared out of nowhere. Now they appeared out of a box. That sorcerer was something else. He really tore up the town, so we've got a serious backlog of work to do. Okay, I guess it's better than a front log, at least. We've taken care of most of the monsters out here. Be careful around Minish Woods, though. The woods are thick with them. So, this guy says they took care of the monsters. What the crud are these? What are these, like, right next to you, dude? And we have lots of nature here we could destroy. I don't think I'm gonna destroy every bit of nature, but... Well, you can get a heart that'll replenish your life, so if we actually get damaged, that could be good. And we could also find money, but we can't carry an infinite amount of money, so... Yeah, it's eventually we're gonna cap out anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. But with our sword, we can defeat this advanced little nature. 
and we can continue on to the Lon Lon Ranch where we have another new enemy. This is an Acro Bandit. These guys attack as a big tower, but if we block the tower, they'll get knocked down. Ow, oh, they actually like got knocked into me. The problem is one of those guys just dug underground. If any of them go under, they will come right back up. So uh, we have to defeat him again. Actually, a decent way to farm collectibles is you just keep leaving one alive, let them go under, and uh, let them pop back up, kill them again over and over. Minish Woods lie far to the south from here. If you get lost, check your map. How the crud does that guy know I have a map? Oh, Link, you're heading for Minish Woods now, aren't you? Leave the monsters that Vani freed to us and go find that Picori. Or find the Picori. All right, then. So you might have noticed before, if you actually attack these guys before they pop out, the whole stack will die just by killing that top one. I don't actually like to do that because if you kill the top one, you only get one chance at a rupee, but if you kill all five, you get five chances. So I like to let them pop out and then swing away at them. But, oh well, let's go over here. I will go ahead and kill all this nature. It looks like someone's personal farm. I don't know if these are their, that's their crops or if that's just weeds. Hopefully they're just weeds, so I'm just helping them out here. Now I wanna destroy these pots because we do have a chance to get not just a green rupee, but also a blue or a red rupee from those guys. I think grass only has a chance to give you either a green or, in rare cases, a blue, but I don't think you can get red from grass. If you can, it's very rare. So we'll hop down here instead of taking the stairs, because stairs are lame. And, oh, I should have let that guy pop out, but oh well. So I got healed back up. Oh, hey, we got a five rupee. Nice. I'll read this sign, and we can see Minish Woods is right next to us. So let's go right inside. And here we are. Once again, going to have some more Octoroks. But, let's kill that guy. Up here, we have a piece of heart. That is something we're going to be collecting a lot of throughout this series, but we actually cannot get that one because we can't swim. So, yeah, we're just going to have to leave that one behind. Now, I do have a personal goal, guys. My goal is to cut down every piece of grass and kill every single enemy in all of Minish Woods. So let's see if we can accomplish that. Right here, we have some thorns. If we bump into that, that will hurt us. We can't even block it, so nothing we can really do with that right now. Go up here and kill this guy. Hopefully one of these guys will drop a heart now that I've hurt myself by showing you guys the vines. Okay, nothing there. Gosh dang it, I need health. Give me something, dude. Nothing. Well, we do have another new enemy right here. This is a green choo-choo. These guys will actually jump at you and if they're underground, if they're kind of in their little sludge state, you actually can't hit them right away. You have to wait for them to pop up and they take two hits to defeat. Nothing too scary. Up here, once again, we can't swim. And over here is just a dead end, so nothing really up here except for this house that we can't get to. So I guess instead we'll just go back down this way and kill more nature. Just give me a heart, dude. No heart. Let's kill this guy if we can. Oh, let's block him at least. There we go. And got him. Yeah, green choo -choo's not that scary. Honestly, none of the enemies at the start are too bad, which is kind of makes sense. Of course, you're going to have easier enemies at the start of the game. Come on, pop out. There we go. Dude, all this time and not a single heart? Come on, I only need half of one. Just drop half of one heart. I'd be okay with that. Okay, we got a, a tree stump with a crack in it. Yeah! I'm doing it, guys! Whoa! Okay, playtime's over. Let's get off and let's go up this way. So we can't go this way. There's a big old log in the way. Maybe it's one of those front logs from before. I don't know, man. But we can go up here and kill the last bit of nature we have access to right now. We can't go to the north because there's going to be deeper water up that way. Come on, guy. Here we go. So can't go up here. That's deep water. It's also just, just nothing up there. Help! Help me! What the crud is going on? What the? What's this guy? Ouch, won't somebody stop them? Ow, ow, help somebody! Can't anybody hear me? Uh, scream louder, dude, I don't know. Yeah, if you've been paying close attention, you might have noticed that on our pause menu, there's a little dude in the background, and that is the same guy we're hearing right now. So we'll have to go back and help him. But real quick, I want to go grab this heart piece. And thankfully, this will heal us up. So, even though I was not able to find a regular heart, we're still back to full health. So, let's go back and see if we can help that dude. Or we can just watch him get hit by Octoroks all day. That sounds like a better plan to me. So, <laughs> I actually saw someone in the comments was counting how many times I was rolling. I'm rolling a lot this episode, so good luck with that crud. Hey, kid, you there! Um, uh, what? Ow! Hey, don't you just stand there, do something! Uh, I, I don't know, I'm having a lot of fun just watching you get hit by rocks. Ow! What's wrong with you? Do you like watching me take this abuse? Yes. Help me! Oh no! How am I supposed to defeat two Octoroks at once? I'm gonna try to actually see if I can kill them with one swing. Yeah, got him! Take that, dude! Whew, well done. That was close. Not that I couldn't handle it myself. But that's beside the point. 
What in the world is a lone child doing so deep in the woods? Ho ho, I see. Hmm? The Picor, you say, and body? Bodies curse someone? What? The sacred blade? Is that so? I see, I see. You know, you and I have quite a lot in common. Uh, I think we have nothing in common. You're a weird cone with a beak? I'm a human, dude, even though my ears are pointy. You see, I too am on a quest to break a curse of bodies. And you say that reforging the sacred blade can break his curse, eh? Huh? Well, then you have found yourself a companion, my boy. My name is Ezlo, which I have no idea how to pronounce, but I'm, I was going to say Ezlo. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. All right, buddy. So he's just going to follow behind us. We'll just move on here. Wait, wait, I say. You walk so quickly, too quickly, in fact. <laughs> Can't you go any slower? Surely you've noticed that I have no legs. Uh, neither do, uh... I was gonna say squirrels, but squirrels have legs. Neither do slugs. I guess they are kind of slow. Snakes don't have legs, dude, and they're fast. Boy, take a good look at me. Do you really think I can walk that fast? Well, you can't walk, but you can kind of hobble. Oh, if it isn't one thing, it's another. You are a troublesome boy. Ouchies. Well, I guess we now have a hat. You can't have a Zelda game without a green hat, I guess. There, now you can't possibly leave me behind. My, it's quite comfortable up here. More comfortable than it looks, surely. And much easier on me. Hey, quit your squirming. Can't you sit still? See there? Yes, yes, that's it. Much better. Now, I suppose a boy like you still has much to learn about the world. If you ever need my insight, press select. I'll be happy to help. Ah, such a hopeless child. Yep. Yes, we could press select. What? I haven't even had time to settle in and you're bothering me. Deepwood Shrine lies, obviously enough, deep in the heart of these woods. So, says my superior intuitive sense. Now, get a move on. So, we can talk to this guy over and over and throughout the game he'll have different dialogue. I love talking to Ezlo. I think he has some funny lines to say. This place is dangerous. There are so many monsters. Kid, be careful. You wouldn't want to let them hurt me. Okay, he's kind of full of himself. Check your surroundings to make sure there's nothing hidden. That's the cardinal rule of adventuring, so don't you forget it. There's a handful more lines we could get right now, but... Well, let's just move on. I think we've had enough talking to Ezlo for now. Hold on for a moment, my boy. Ezlo, I just said we've had enough talking to you. We've stumbled across something important. The world of the Minish is very small. You're far too big to meet them now. Huh? Who are the Minish? Ah, yes, yeah, silly me. Allow me to explain. You humans call them Picori, but they refer to themselves as the Minish. <coughs> I need water. <laughs> I'm good. <clears throat> Strange how in the world of humans, only this forest has kept that name. Anyhow, deep in the forest, they built a tiny village where many now live. But if we're to enter the village, we'll have to make you a touch smaller first. Aren't I small enough? Princess Zelda got me a tiny shield because she said it suited me. I don't need to be any smaller. Look at that. At first glance, it appears to be a mere stump, yes? Uh, yes. No, that stump is a portal used by people long ago to adjust their size. Great, can I get bigger then? I want to be huge. With my help, you can use it to shrink down to diminish size. I don't want to shrink, I want to get big. Just stand on the stump and press R to shrink. To return to normal, stand next to the stump and press R. Get me up there and we'll give it a try. Um, okay. I guess we'll play along and press R here. Aw, oh, jeez. Thanks a lot, Ezlo. I'm like four pixels tall. I was just making fun of that kid in the last episode for only having a body that was four pixels tall. And now all of me is only four pixels tall, dude. Welcome to the world through the eyes of the Minish. Now, aren't you glad you saved me? No need to thank me, though. Portals that reduce your size are all around in different shapes and sizes. If you want to return to normal, stand next to a portal and press R. But there is one thing you must know. Being Minish size is full of dangers. Mere puddles at your normal size are bottomless swamps to the Minish. And as your companion, if anything bad happens to you, it happens to me too. So proceed with caution, my lad. If not for your sake, then for my own. So now that we're tiny, we cannot go past even short grass. We can swing our sword, but we can't actually chop down anything. We can't even use our shield, but we can still roll. So that's pretty fancy. So this shallow water, can't do it. It's too deep, but now we can go through this little hole in this log. So there are benefits to being small. It lets us squeeze into tight places. Oh, please make it. Crud! Okay, so we're gonna have to wait and stand on this lily pad. I guess very conveniently, the lily pads are going in a very specific pattern for us to ride them. And here we go. We have this little path here. Got some giant acorns. Time to add a bunch of rolls to the roll counter, which I won't be keeping, but maybe someone out there will. And here we have Minish Village. 
So let's go up. And let's see what we have here. Hmm, it appears we found the Minish Village. Yes. Uh-oh. Ah, jeez. You do exist. Ah, oh, crud. Pico, Picori. Uh-oh. Ripi, Ripico, Picori. The talking like Pokemon. Oh, no. Picoco, Pico, Ripico. Uh-oh. I gather it's been quite some time since they last saw a human. What's that? You didn't understand what they were saying just now. Ah, uh, yes, that was the language of the Minish. It's a little different from the dialect I am most familiar with. I'm afraid I didn't catch most of what they said myself. But perhaps there is someone here who understands your language. We should look around. How the crud do you understand the Meslo? What a weird dude. Well, we can go around Minish Village, and there are some different Picori or Minish to talk to. But we can't really understand them, so we're just going to skip that for now and go to where we need to go to. I guess we'll roll along here, chop down some nuts. The nuts are kind of like grass. They have a chance to drop hearts or some rupees. So not that important to cut down, but you could. So the building we actually need to go to is this one right here. I'm going to take a little detour first to get ourselves another collectible here. So we go off to this side, and we get ourselves our second heart piece. Two more of those, and our heart count will go from three all the way up to four. But... Well, we're not going to be able to get those today. Oh, well. So let's go back to that building and actually make some progress here. So we go inside. We've got a very special dude. Let's talk to him here. Hmm, I've never seen an outfit like that before. Are you a human? Oh my, it's been quite some time since any humans came here. My name is Festari. I watch the Abbey as well as the Shrine to the North. You seem to be having some trouble with our language, don't you? You could use a jabber nut. It will allow you to understand our tongue. You should be able to find one in the barrel house just south of here. All right, so we'll go down to the barrel house and see if we can find ourselves a jabber nut. Kind of already showed you guys where the barrel house was, but there is a second entrance. We can go in through the top if we just go down this way. And we can just drop in like that. So there we go. We'll go up this way. And we'll see these sparkling things here with different colors. I'm sure those won't be important for anything at all at any point. So don't worry about those. We'll just push that box out of the way and grab some nut. Oh, Link, this must be the jabber nut Fistari told you about. Well, you'd better eat it if you plan on making any progress at all. You ate the jabber nut. No, I didn't. It's right there in my hand. I'm still holding on to it. Now you can understand the language of the Minish. Hooray! As someone who has been learning Japanese for a very long time and studies it every single day for several hours, it'd be kind of cool if I could just eat a nut and be good. No, actually, it's it's about the process. It's about the journey, not the destination. I, I enjoy the learning process. Anyways, so you've eaten the jabber nut, and now you can understand us. The elder said that humans can no longer see us as they once could. It's amazing that you can see us. Hooray! So we're going to go up top here, and now we can start talking to people. Or Picori, I guess they're not technically people, but whatever. You've heard of travelers who find a kinstone and get really lucky. Well, that's all thanks to items made by us Minish. You see, we thrive on making humans happy. It gives us energy. But we only do it in secret. It's not very secret if you go around telling people about it. I guess they're only telling me about it. Maybe I'm just uh, so cool that I'm in on the secret. But whatever he was talking about kinstone, I don't know what that crud is. Oh, well. Hey, buddy. Our ancestors, the ancient Minish, used the portal between our worlds. It brought them into the human world, and they settled in this forest. Okay. Yeah, I really like talking to the different characters throughout Minish Cap, because they do a good job of telling you the different lore and stuff. And speaking of lore, in the Zelda timeline, this is actually the second game in the timeline. The only thing that comes before this is Skyward Sword, so this is a very, very early game in the timeline. There are so many monsters around these woods lately. The Elder said that even the shrine to the north is filled with monsters now. So the, the legend of the hero from like a hundred years ago or whatever that was at the very start of the game in the opening cutscene, I don't think you ever actually get to play as that Link in any other game. I don't think that's the Skyward Sword Link. I think that's just some random Link that, well, you never actually get to see. Do you know about kinstone pieces? They're all the rage among humans now. I don't know about kinstone pieces. Why is everyone talking about kinstone pieces, dude? Right, we got one more house right here. Hey, nice clothes. I want to wear human clothes too. Um, our outfits are not that different. I guess I got the hat, which is kind of the same as them, but they're wearing some green clothes. I'm wearing some green clothes. The only difference is I have shoes and maybe a little belt on or something. If you want to reforge that sword, you'll need the help of an expert smith. Master Milari and his seven apprentices can help you. Ah, they live in the mountains where they can find all the ore they need. I'm sure the elder would tell you about him if you asked. Okay, so let's go up to the elder's house. It's pretty much the last building we haven't gone inside, but I don't know. It's just my thing. You guys know how it is. I love to get all the dialogue and get the full picture of the game rather than just rushing through it. So here's the Elder. Let's talk to him. Oh, you speak our language. Yeah, I do. It's been quite a while since we've heard outsiders speak our tongue. We have little to offer you in these woods, but please enjoy your stay. 
Uh, thank you for your offer, but we have no time to relax. My name is Ezlo. This child is Link. We need to break a curse that has been cast on the Princess of Hyrule. To do so, we'll need to reforge the broken Picori blade. Ah, yes, and you've come here now hoping to have the blade reforged. Hmm, well, if that's what you're after, you'll need four mystic elements. Those elements are the crystalline forms of the energies of this world. Only by infusing the blade with these energies can a new blade be forged. Here, give me your map. I can mark where these elements can be found. And there they are. Three of them are scattered throughout the world, but one of them is right here in the Minish Woods. All right. The earth element can be found in the shrine to the north of Fistari's Abbey. Speak with Fistari. He will show you the path to the shrine's entrance. Go with caution. Evil creatures have lately made their home in our shrine. Return to me at once after you have found the earth element. All right. And one little cool thing is on the background there, you can actually see the symbols that are the elements, which is kind of cool. This one on the right that looks like three teardrops or something, that's the Earth one, so that's the one we're after. So let's make our way back over to Fistari's place. We've got a few dudes outside to talk to as well. We Minish live in Hyrule Town and other places too, not just in these woods. That's kind of cool. You probably haven't noticed, but lots of Minish live right in Hyrule Town. Hmm, okay. I'm getting set to leave for town and visit some of my Minish friends there. Alrighty, so let's go up and talk to Fistari. Hopefully he'll give us access to the Deepwood Shrine. You wish to go to the shrine? Very well, this way. Well, uh, that was easy. Vile beasts have settled in recently. Be careful, it is quite dangerous. Danger is, uh, okay with me. So we'll go up, we'll go through this little secret area. And right here is where we got the heart piece before, so we already got that. You actually cannot collect heart pieces while you are minish sized, so you want to get this one before you're here as a minish, otherwise you'll just have to stare at it very awkwardly. Now right up here, we have Deepwood Shrine, but I'm going to be evil, guys. We're going to go ahead and wrap things up here for today. We'll come back next time and we will start our first dungeon, the Deepwood Shrine. I'll see you guys then. Take care!